Welcome to this week in sports betting podcast. This is Marco D'Angelo along with my partner in crime, Vegas Runner. This is the New Year's Eve edition. We're going to take a look at one of the games on New Year's Eve. Stanford at Oklahoma, and as we always do, Vegas Runner, tell us about the line on this one. That's the Sun Bowl. It's played in El Paso at Sun Bowl Stadium, Stanford versus Oklahoma. Oklahoma opened as a 12-point favorite with a total of 57. As of today, Oklahoma is down to 10 and 55 and a half. So there's definite money coming in on Stanford and some definite money coming in on the under for this game early on. Well, you know, and understandable. I mean, you've got two things going here. Uh, Stanford, all offense. I mean, they've scored 28 or more points, seven straight games. They're playing an Oklahoma team that just doesn't win bowl games. I mean, for everything good that Stoops has done at Oklahoma, the one thing he hasn't done is he, you know... No, they've lost three straight against the spread and straight up the, the last three bowl games, so... You know, the big question here coming in, you know, when we look at the bowls, we always talk about motivation. And the first thing that jumps out in this game is Oklahoma's going from playing in the national championship game last bowl season to the Sun Bowl. Now... How can they get excited for a game like this? That's the first question. And Stanford's playing in their first bowl since 2001. So, I mean, you know Stanford's motivated to be there. That's for sure. But the only thing, uh, uh, the main thing we got to get across, though, uh, the big factor, the reason this line's 10 even, when you, when you look at it, um, according to Las Vegas Sports Consultants, their final poll heading towards the end of the season, the Week 15 poll, had Stanford listed as the 17th strongest team in the country. Um, the USA Today has them at 21, and the BCS has them at 21. Okay, so LVSC, the odds makers say they're even stronger mm-hmm. than the, the computer says they are. Now, um, Oklahoma isn't even ranked in the BCS, isn't ranked in the USA Today AP poll, nowhere. But the Las Vegas Sports Consultant poll has them ranked 11th still. So according to him, uh, them, the the odds makers poll, Oklahoma's the much better team. And more importantly, their ratings would show Oklahoma as a one and a half point favorite. But the big question mark and what we need to get across is the quarterback for Stanford is probably not going to play. That's the biggest factor right now. Um, I mean, Andrew Luck's done a lot as a freshman. He's turned the offense around. Even though they don't depend on him to win games, you know, he's been able to balance their offense some, you know, and their 11th most yards in the country rushing. So, uh, you know, not having a passing game at all, if that's the fa- the, the problem coming in, I see them having some problems against Oklahoma because Oklahoma's 22nd against the pass, 8th against the run. So where's the Stanford offense going to come from if the quarterback doesn't play? It says doubtful as of this morning. Well, Oklahoma, no question, their rush defense, 2.7 yards per carry. Stanford's offense, as you said, Luck's done a lot with Stanford this year, but this offense... It starts and finishes with Gerhardt. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. There's yeah. no question about it. 26 uh, touchdowns, 1,700 rushing yards. He's, he's the heart and soul. Yeah, right. yeah. He's the heart and soul of this team, and Oklahoma needs to contain him to, to win this game. Oklahoma. You think they could? Oklahoma is. Is, 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 it, is that true strength when it says eighth against the rush in rushing yards? They allowed? have. If you, They're if that you, good? If you look at it, and remember, they played in in the uh, Big 12. A lot of offense in the Big 12. Oklahoma held 8 of 12 teams to 14 points or less this yeah, year. Yeah, you're 7th in the nation in points allowed. 7th. But uh, Stanford's 10th in points scored. The, so they could put up points, but is luck going to be that big of a factor if he doesn't play? You think, you know, the, the running back could do it all? The situation, I don't. Um, the situation being... I don't like the fact that Oklahoma is going from the national championship game to the Sun Bowl because there's a definite question about motivation. But the fact that this senior class... Yeah, hasn't won. ...has not won a bowl game. 
makes me believe that maybe the fact that they're not playing in a big bowl game with big pressure, Oklahoma can actually finally come out and play loose. Yeah. I mean, what do they have? What do they have? No, to lose? it's not a New Year's Day bowl. You're exactly. not getting a, a, a high ranking. In, you're we, not even ranked. You you're know? not. Even, and, and I'll tell you, what, Oklahoma is the best non-ranked team in the country. Yeah, even the odds makers. Remember, they had them like number two mm. or three, even when they already had three losses. So, I mean, as far as being a strong club. Personnel-wise, offensively and defensively, yeah. And Landry stepped in and, and done a great job for Bradford. I mean, he, he's not mm. Sam Bradford. That's understood. Right. I, I, he he may be as good as him by his senior year. I mean, the kid's only a freshman, and, and he's played good. 2,700 yards, 23 touchdowns, only 13 INTs, so he's not turning the ball over. That's good for him. To, you know, he's only played five games. And the thing, the thing with Stanford that the public's going to look at is they see all those points they're scoring, and, you know, and you're getting 10, you know, you, you figure if Stanford scores like they've been scoring and They'll you're getting in the 10, game. Yeah. You're, you're in good shape. And the back door is always open. And, and the thing is, um, Andrew Luck came in and, and he's played five games. So he took over for Pritchard, who's a senior, I think. Right. Yeah, senior quarterback. Didn't play much, but a senior quarterback who, who in his career, 10 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. So even though the drop-off is big as far as talent, or else they wouldn't be going with the freshman right. over a senior, but at least you have someone stepping in who, who's started, who's gotten the job done, who's played, you know, and uh, he's a senior. Here's the other point to consider. If Oklahoma gets the lead, gets the big lead and forces Stanford to abandon the run. Yeah. That then Stanford becomes in big trouble. And, and the, it's not like Oklahoma can't defend the pass either, you know. And the fact that Stanford can't stop anybody offensively, yeah. you get those that big offensive line for Oklahoma, you get into the third and fourth quarter and you've got a lead and they start running the ball down your throat, Oklahoma can protect the lead. Can you can you believe Stanford this year with the 23rd toughest schedule in college football finished above Cal, UCLA and USC? In the Pac-10, there's so, no I mean, question. They've had a, a great year, even though eight and four isn't, you know, something you're going to go nuts about. They've really turned it around, and the finish that high, you know, oh, in absolutely. the Pac-10. Stanford's, That's huge over their California rivals. Stanford's overachieved this year. There's no question about it. The thing with the the Pac-10 this year, the Pac-10 this year was more like the Big 12 the last few years. All offense. Yeah. No defense. And and is that going to play a role? That's what I wanted to talk, ask you. That that's what I thought of when I was breaking this down this game. Because you're you're very good in fundamental handicapping, and when there's breaks, and when they're not on a normal rotation, and and stuff like that. And what I was going to say with Stanford coming in so hot, winning four of their last five, scoring thirty three or more points in five of their last six games. Exactly what you just said. They've done it with offense. It's been clicking. They've been scoring enough points to win games, even right. though they're the 67th worst in points allowed in the right. nation. Is this layoff going to s- slow that down? And with the quarterback situation, could it? Could they go into this bowl game and just not be clicking at all offensively? Well, momentum. Is that why the move to the under? You think the momentum definitely uh, is going to hurt them. You know, you, you broke their momentum, but they're not a they're not a precision timing type because of the running team. game. Because of the running game, you know, with they're Gerhardt. Not some quirky, and let's not forget, offense. Gerhardt let it slip that you know. This was going to be his last game. Yeah, yeah, and he's, yeah. Then he's yeah. going to. Then he's going to. <laughs> it's all over it. Twitter yeah. and before anyone else knows. So. so I mean, there's going to be motivation there. But both but, teams. I mean, Oklahoma, zero and three. Like you said, there's, this is I, uh, for uh, the Sun Bowl. Right. This is a good game, I think, and, and it's a very intriguing game where you have a ten point spread. And honestly, I can't pick a side right now. I can't pick a side or a total. I wish I could even tell you a I don't, lean. I don't have an official I play. I, my lean's to Oklahoma. My know? lean's to Oklahoma, too, and it's not an official free pick. We'll have that later. But I have a lean to Oklahoma. Me, too. we got to wrap up this first segment. Uh, this was the Sun Bowl. This is played on New Year's Eve. Uh, and we'll be back with uh, – we're going to preview six games. Great games. Check them all out at pregame.tv or you can download and listen on iTunes. Just search for pregame.com.